I'm trying to eat what the locals eat here. So today I've got some uh, fried rice with some fish in what looks like a chili peanut sauce and some stir fried kale. Are you happy to see the green on my plate? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever it rains, we never come out, right? So after a long time, I'm, you know... Getting soaked in the rain. Yes. Well, that's what holidays are meant to be for. Do stuff that you typically don't do otherwise. Yeah. So this is Patong. Patong and this is the beach road. There's one strip which, which is the Bangla road further up. Bars, nightclubs. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Some parts of uh, this area also has such a Goa vibe. Even counting in the airfare that you would uh, spend to get here, I think it still offers you terrific bang for your buck. So the weather has been absolutely great for the entire duration of our stay. Today we are into our sixth day. So there's been the intermittent showers and then this constant cloud cover which has been great because it's kept things really cool and breezy. Otherwise if you come in the summer, Phuket can tend to get very hot. So when you plan on a trip to Phuket, where you stay is very important. You want to stay in a place where it's accessible to wherever you need to be, wherever you need to go in terms of let's say the sites to take or perhaps the beaches. But you don't want that place to be too crowded as well. And for us, Karon Beach fit that spot beautifully well. Kata, which is further south, is a little crowded. Patong is extremely crowded. That's also where the city's bustling nightlife is. Karon is lovely because it's quiet. In fact, it's got one of the largest beaches in this stretch. So just to give you an idea of Phuket, it's an island. So it's Thailand's largest island. It's roughly about 500 odd square kilometers, uh, perhaps the same size as Singapore. And so we are closer to the southern tip of the island. So today is a bit of an easy day in the evening. We're going out to meet some friends. I hope you're enjoying this vlog series. Um, I just wanted to take the camera along and share with you uh, what the Phuket experience is all about. For those of you interested in visiting here and also perhaps for those of you who may not be visiting here but just want to know what a holiday in Phuket is all about. Three hours breakfast. My breakfast was very good. Yeah. I had some fruits, uh, some mixed nut cereal with milk. Yeah. And plenty of greens. Yeah. Well, as for me, I'm trying to eat what the locals eat here. So today I've got some uh, fried rice with Chinese sausage, some fish in what looks like a chili peanut sauce and some stir fried kale. Are you happy to see the green on my plate? Yeah. I love the flavor of the rice here, the jasmine rice. Mm. The fish is first fried, then tossed in that curry. Flavor of the peanut, some chili there. I can taste a bit of the sourness of the nampla, which is basically the fish sauce that's used to season things here. And now for some soup, we got some noodles in there, plenty of greens, some fish in that, some chicken in that, and a nice clear broth. Light yet very flavorful. So yesterday we uh, skipped dinner. I had a busy day going to the Ravai dock, the fishing pier, and then we came back, watched the chefs cook. In the evening, we just chilled out, didn't have any dinner. So today, I'm a little hungry for breakfast. So in a manner of speaking, this will like become my intermittent fast, no? Yeah. Mm. Walk after breakfast to work all that food down. That's the other nice thing about this property. You've got all these walking paths. I did a vlog the other day where I walked around this property. Also cycled around a bit. I hope you caught that. There's a temple there. That's a Vishnu temple. Do catch that vlog. I've shown all of that in detail. I like hotels like these. Hotels should not just be places where you stay and then you get away, especially when you're on a holiday. But there should also be havens of comfort where you can just relax. If you just want to spend time in the hotel, you should be able to do that without getting bored. There should be enough activity enough things for you to do. You shouldn't feel cooped up, claustrophobic 
one of the five pools that this hotel has here. Good morning, Swadikrap. How are you? Okay. Thank you. Nice and friendly people everywhere. Look at this rooster. And if you want some more ground to cover on your walk, well, just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the hotel is the beach, the Karan beach. So you can also walk here. What do you call this called? Aquamarine. It's that greenish blue. So once you cross Karan beach and head in that direction, that is uh, Kata. And uh, all the way back there, I think somewhere beyond the mountains is uh, Patong. Right, got that shot. Things one has to do. The sea is aquamarine, closer to the shore, and beyond in the deep, you can see the color changes. It's almost bluish black, and it's also begun to rain now, so time to beat a retreat to the hotel. Whenever it rains, we never come out, right? So after a long time, I'm, you know. Getting soaked in the rain. Yes. Well, as we're already are meant to, we for do stuff that you typically don't do otherwise. Yeah. Any of these sodas, everything will be stuck in the bottom. Very refreshing. Well, this is become our adda now. This cafe here at the hotel, it's called Keron Cafe. So post breakfast, sometime mid afternoon, also for a light lunch. And I've discovered something that I've I'm tasting after a very long time. Rediscovered actually. This is an affogado. Espresso shot that's poured over some vanilla ice cream. You know, I first tasted this when I was at Barista in Bengaluru years ago. You remember that cafe yeah. called Barista? William Penn next to mm. I quite prefer this to some of the other uh, creamy coffee drinks, right? Like the frappes and cold coffee with ice cream etc. This is delicious. Just the bitterness of coffee complementing the sweetness of the vanilla. It's so good to see you Kripa. So Mark is going to introduce me to the food of this land. You know this reminds me of a South Indian curry. When you start tasting the flavors you'll notice a lot of cross similarities. All right. Mm. Mm. I eat this almost every day. My yeah. mother-in-law cooks it. Mm. These mushrooms taste like meat, actually. Mm. You know it's gonna be a flavor overdose. This is the high point of my culinary experience in uh, Thailand, in Phuket. The chili in that is now is ringing in my ear. This is a new sensation for me. <laughs> As you can see, my voice has changed and that chili is ringing here. <laughs> this is the Karan village. Well, it's about 6.30 in the evening and we've stepped out to explore a different area of uh, Phuket today. Where are we going, Ajay? We're going towards a place called Laguna. Okay. Laguna is on the northern side of Phuket. Phuket is a big island, like I said. It's from one to another is an hour okay. drive for sure. And an interesting drive because you're going to go through the beach side, the ocean side, and then through the cut to the mountains. So the Laguna is at newer suburbs where a lot of expats are moving in, a lot of new restaurants, hotels, uh, plenty of hotels that's coming up in okay. the next year or so. So you're going to see a lot of interesting restaurants, day clubs. So I think we're going to Kapi Dam, which is a, a beach club. So we're also looking forward to catching up with some friends of ours from Bengaluru whom we haven't met in a long time. So that's the plan to head to Laguna, the Carpe Diem Beach Club. These are the day beach clubs where, because it's the sun and the sea and the sand, right? So people just hang out. People hang out during the day, you, you know, you're going to the sea, coming back into the pool, kids hanging out in the pool, uh, good cocktails, good food. So the day clubs are quite popular in pool. So we haven't been to a day club yet here in Phuket. We thought it'd be interesting to check this out and also take you along uh, 
for the ride. Shri, are you looking forward to this? I am very much looking forward to it. So this is Patong. Patong and this is the beach road. There is one strip which, which is the Bangla road further up. Bars, nightclubs. So basically, Karon, Kata are the quieter areas. Yeah, more more from a, a family perspective. Correct. Where, of course, there are the markets and there are other things, but then it's it's more family. Driven. Whereas Patong is uh, the nightlife. The nightlife. It's also quite packed as opposed to uh, Karon and right. Very packed, and this is low season. Okay. Season one hour from that corner to really? this, this side. One hour minimum. So if you're looking for the nightlife, well, this is where things happen in Patong. Yeah. So this becomes a no-drive zone. The whole okay. street is full of restaurants, bars. This is called Bangla Road. Bangla Road. Um, okay. Nightclub. And of course, scores of massage parlors everywhere. Good times. Come to Phuket, you have to do a tuk tuk ride as well. So, we are doing a tuk tuk ride to Katha. She wants to get another foot massage. She likes the foot massage so much. Same place, what is that place called? Sa Sabai Sabai. Sabai Sabai. At the back gate of the walking street. And we said this time around we won't walk. We'll take the tuk tuk. So, you pay 200 baht for maybe a 5 minute ride, 7 minute ride. There are certain things that just kind of uh, make you feel like you've experienced the place in its fullest and uh, a tuk-tuk ride is certainly one of them. So we have the last couple of days now here. So last night we went to one of those uh, beach clubs called uh, Carpe Diem. So that again is a very popular thing to do out here. So people go to these beach clubs by the day. Also by the evening. It was interesting, nice, lovely location by the sea and they have quite a few acts that happened through the evening. So it's a place where you go, chill, have a drink or two and also watch something different, watch something new. Yesterday was also for us a catch up with friends we haven't met in a while. So Jean-Michel and his wife Young, who basically are now based in Phuket. So it was good fun. So last couple of days we're trying to relax and also do some things that we haven't done that we feel we'd like to do. That's the plan. Something that you definitely must get done when you come here to Phuket. The foot massage especially. Because when you're out here you do a lot of walking and you're always up and about. So it's nice to get refresh, re-energize your feet. And they do a great job for all of 300 baht. An hour of uh, kneading your feet. Walking back to our hotel now. That was a great foot massage. Also, what happens in the mornings or afternoon? What's the time now? It's about one o'clock. There's not too many people. The masseuses are also full of energy, and the place is quiet, so it feels very calming, very relaxing. It's rained while we were in the massage shop, so the weather is nice and pleasant. In fact, all this week it was supposed to be raining, but the rain gods have been kind. So we've only had these intermittent showers and uh, constant cloud cover. I hope you're enjoying this vlog series. Just giving you a sense of our kind of a relaxed holiday in you here in Phuket. Not been too hectic, just been easy paced. The way we like to keep things. So we've not done all things touristy. We've done a few because after all, when you go to a place, you've got to 
tick off the things that you want to do but we haven't done some of them as well we haven't done for instance the boat rides to the islands for those of you who were perhaps keen on that apologies but that's not really a kind of thing and uh, besides you'll find plenty of those boat rides uh, those videos on YouTube we don't want to do things just to film videos but we want to do things that we enjoy doing and uh, sharing them with you from whatever we've seen of the boat tours to Fifi Island James Bond Island etc we just felt that wasn't for us nice to also find a perch at one of these restaurants and just grab a drink a coffee watch life go by so the food that you will find for the most part in these sort of restaurants are designed for the tourists what was really interesting was the meal that I had with Mark Wiens. Uh, you would have caught that video already or if not, do look that video up where we tasted some great southern Thai food. So for those kind of experiences, you got to go beyond these uh, touristy areas. You got to venture a little deep and you must take a look at that video where we tasted some excellent southern Thai cuisine. Also food wise, one of those places where you'll get everything you want from seafood to Thai cuisine to sushi to mince pies and uh, burgers and whatnot. There's a idol of Lord Ganesha there at Tata Garden Resort. You also have many Hindus and Muslims and Buddhists. So it's a cosmopolitan mix of all faiths. And I guess that's also one of the reasons why perhaps it's also an island that's very tolerant, peace loving. Steak houses too. Some parts of uh, this area also has such a Goa vibe when you look at it. Like for instance, this little resort that you see here. The one thing out here when you walk this trip is that everything has its place, right? So you won't have people coming up to you and soliciting things and whatnot. Things are clean. There's a lot happening, but there's a certain order to it. There's a certain system to things, which is what I think uh, makes it very tourist friendly, be it in terms of transport, places where you stay, the restaurants, the massage parlors, if you want to rent scooters. And I'm sure that the resorts and places stay here are a lot cheaper than Goa. And I guess that's also the reason why places like these are becoming very popular. There's so many direct flights now from India to Phuket. Because I think people find great value for money. Even counting in the airfare that you would uh, spend to get here, I think it still offers you terrific bang for your buck. Like even with these tuk-tuks, there is a price board, a price chart there which tells you how much you should pay to what area. An interesting store there, sweet talk and coffee talk. Right next to Chow Pizza. You buy a cocktail there for 260 baht and you also get a free swim. That's the concept of uh, the day beach clubs that operate here. So most of them have a nice uh, promenade overlooking the sea. There's a pool, you have your drinks, have some food and just enjoy your day there. So especially if you are not in a hotel which has swimming pools etc. You can be in a little budget accommodation somewhere and still enjoy the, uh, the beach, the pool. That sort of vibe. restaurants that's historical and preserving traditional recipes. It's one of the most well-known restaurants also in Phuket. Yeah. I'm so happy so you guys can enjoy your meal. Man, that's got all the mushrooms that they have in Thailand, I think. These are noodles, vermicelli noodles, made into a little bundle like that. And that's to be eaten specifically with the crab curry, with the, the wild beetle leaves. This is like a pork belly, yo. The full slab of pork belly, yes. A little bit of that sauce. Oh man. Yeah. Cook all. We gotta try that. Mmm. That fat. 
yeah. It's like a silken mousse. <laughs> I would associate this with like a, a very simple stew in Kerala. Something that everybody could eat as well. Yeah, just the coconut milk and maybe a little bit of flavor that comes from a chili, a little bit of the garlic. Mm. 